Hey girlies, this week the queens had to compete in a piss take of six the Rusical. Now this was half Rusical, half girl group challenge and I actually really, really enjoyed it. However, I do think there's some controversy with who was the top two this week. But we're going to go through all of that and more in this video. Without further ado, let's jump straight into it. I'm going to be giving the queens a rating out of five stars for their girl group performance. And then we'll discuss the runways following that. I'm going to break down some of the lyrics. Not all of them I will discuss, but just some of my favourite lines from each queen's verses. Just quickly, also want to apologise for the lack of activity and new videos on the channel. Um, I just passed my driving test, so it's been a bit wild at the minute in my real life, but... Snaps for me for passing, I guess. Anyway, let's get into it. First up, we have Choriza May. Now, her verse was meant to be a strong rap verse with fierce attitude. And I think she semi-accomplished it. The look, to begin with, I don't really like. I think it swallows it up completely. And the makeup for me, the contouring and blush is just too harsh. As far as lyrics go, I think there are some really strong lyrics in here. That I messed up the first one, no worries, no drama. Coming in strong like the Spanish Armada. That bit is fierce. Really, really liked those lyrics. I liked the simile. I liked the rhyming scheme. That was really great. Um, I don't know why she needed to repeat Choriza May twice. I don't think that was necessary. And also her stage presence, it just was not here. It was nowhere to be seen. Oh, girl, I'm still looking for it. She just seemed so unsure of herself whilst delivering this performance. The vocals were good. The vocal delivery was good. But she was as stiff as a board baby. And the choreo, not the strongest for Teresa. So overall, it's a 2.5 stars out of 5. Next up, we have one of my favourites this week, Miss Scarlet Envy. Now, either I'm a delusional Scarlet fan or Scarlet Envy can just do no wrong. Her verse was meant to be an upbeat, more disco and showcase of vocal. And I think she absolutely smashed it. First of all, the lyric here where it says, Sashay, away. Made me who I am today, never fear the future. That That is just so, so cute. So, so cute. And talk about somebody that had stage presence. Scarlett really had presence. She did so much better with the choreography than I ever anticipated. I know it was only basic, but she made it look her own. She looked like she was in the moment. She connected with the judges. She really gave it the attitude that it needed. And I just think for someone who's not really known for singing, she's come onto this season and she's done a really good job showcasing her voice. I think better than some of the girls who actually make music. I think what makes Scarlett just a step above the other girls in this challenge is her inflections on her voice. Now look, at me it's the difference in tone that just makes everything so great and gives it a lot of character and personality which is what we wanted but scarlet and Veach, she killed it she looked really cute she made the outfit she was wearing which snaps for her i just think she gave it all round the attitude the lyrics everything was great Yes, Miss Scarlet is a 4.5 stars out of 5. Following Scarlet, we have another top girl of the week, Miss Marina Summers. First of all, you look like a pop star, you sound like a pop star, you're a pop star. This was fucking incredible. Marina looks so fierce. This outfit is so, so cute, first of all. Second of all, her verse was meant to be a more modern pop verse with lots of attitude and talk about attitude. Ow! The attitude is off the scales with this one. I mean, her choreo... First of all, she did the most amount of choreo out of any of the girls. It still wasn't a lot, but it was enough to be impressive. And she hits it every single time. The way she moves her body, you guys already know, I am obsessed with... The lyrics, I'm a Filipina diva with a confession. I'm a little Asian from a faraway nation. Yes, giving us who she is, but also a fierce rap moment. I can be a lot of danger, pull up an invasion. Ready to take over Filipino domination. The rhyming scheme in this verse is everything I live. The lyrics are giving attitude. She is showing that she is that bitch and there is no stopping her. And we believe her. And the oxymoron, drop it's hot like it's made of ice. Five out of five stars for this one. This verse is it. I appreciate as well her commitment to getting those vocal tones right. She's not the best singer in the world. She sounded really rough in the rehearsals and I was worried for her. But she pulled it out of the bag. She sounded cute and the rap was fierce. Five out of five. No complaints. Now, from a production sacrificial lamb to possible favourite, it's Tia Coffee. 
This was very controversial. Obviously, she was in the top two this week, but does this performance reflect that or are they giving her a little helping hand? Because this is the third week in a row that she was in the top. Tia's verse was meant to be the big epic vocal moment and in terms of that, it fell flat. I'm sorry, it did. I love Tia. I've seen Tia sing live and she sounds great. However, the maybe it was the song. I don't know what it was, but... There was no, there was nowhere to go with Tia's voice. It was very monotone. It was very low pitched. There was no getting up there in terms of range. It was just not giving for a big epic vocal moment. It was, it was not it. It truly wasn't. I actually think Scarlett's verse was a bigger vocal moment than this performance. The ad libs at the end with the world. It could have gone up a bit in, in an octave and. Or, or done something, just hold the note, something a bit more impressive. You know, it just wasn't giving. The look, she looks really, really cute. In comparison to her original season, she looks incredible. Massive, massive glow up and we love to see it. The lyrics, don't give me that bing, bang, bong. I'm gonna hit you with a brand new song. That bit is fierce. Baroness Basics reign is now over. I'm not a star, I'm a supernova. Yes, the whole first chunk of her verse is great. The lyrics are really great and you can tell that she writes lyrics in her day-to-day -day life, like this is what she does. Great, no complaints. I just wish it went somewhere. So I can't give it any more than a three out of five stars. This was the one I was most confused on how to rate. It's Le Grand Dame. It was meant to be a funky, slower verse, perfect for rapping slash sing speaking. And she accomplished that. She sounded great. She sounded really good. And I was taken aback. I didn't expect her to be able to rap. She looked out of place in the group, I will say. She was the only one not in purple. And I mean, if another girl wore whitish, silvery colours, I don't think it would have been as bad, but she did stick out a little bit for those reasons. The actual lyrics, I'm not a fan of, and that's why I've rated it a bit lower. I don't like when people rhyme the same word together, beat and beat in this instance. I don't, I just don't live for that. Part I did like here though, was check the verse, I'm not fooling around. I was a big deal then, I'm a bigger deal now. Oh, that bit was cute. And I also liked the let's go ladies and then the breakdown into the choreo, that was cute. Stage presence was there, everything was there. I just did not like the lyrics. And for that reason, it's a three out of five stars. Next, we have someone who had a really good week this week, Miss Hannah Conda. Now, she was casted as the comedic and quirky role, which we know Hannah to be and we love her for. And she did a great job to nobody's surprise. This is perfectly her to a T. And we love it when queens play to their strengths. I mean, she was kind of forced into the role, which is funny that she pokes fun at that in her lyrics. So typecast, I think I'm cursed. I love that she referenced Spanky Jackson in her lyrics, lost to a queen who wore no pants, which I mean... It's kind of embarrassing if you think about it. Imagine losing to that. No, I'm joking. We love Spanky in this house. She's just ridiculous. Glamdiculous, actually. She's great at branding and her witty sense of humour. She just knows how to use that to her strengths. She did a good job, serviceable job with the choreography. Yeah, good job for Hannah this week. Really, really was a big sleigh. Four out of five stars. We love you, Hannah. Last, but also last, we have Goffy Kendall. Now, in the similar fashion of the judges, I don't want to be too harsh. Because <laughs> you know, if this was pre-season 9, she would have been absolutely torn to shreds. Pre-sensitivity era, she would have had her ass handed to her for the way she fucked up the choreography so badly. This girl just hasn't got a lick of confidence, like not enough confidence to even just to commit to what she's selling. She can't even sell anything, apparently. She just stood there and walked around, <laughs> didn't even try to make up something. I mean, if you forget the older choreo, whatever, just do something. Please just move. And then at the end, once her mic was still on to say, this is the hardest thing I've ever had to do. With your mic on, you said that, girl! Where is your self-awareness? Where is your confidence? Come on. We're rooting for you, Miss Raw. Come on, girl. The lyrics as well. If she would have actually given it during the first portion, well, the whole entire number, actually, she would have been probably okay because her verse is not the worst. Ah, it's me, Goffy's back up on your TV. That was cute. I didn't like the when a step on the runway, never gonna sashay. 
well, once. I didn't like that. That was not cute. The way she delivered her verse, she did a good job. I thought it sounded good. If she had just done something, she would have been fine. I think. Mm, yeah, she probably still would have gone home. Anyway, sorry, Goffy. It was just not it. I just don't think she's good at drag race. She's a good drag queen. She's just not good at drag race. And that's a similar case for a lot of queens. And that's okay. They don't have to be. But I'm glad she was rightfully eliminated. Okay, so now we are going to quickly discuss the runways. Category is Redemption. First up is Theresa May. Now, I didn't really like the original look and I still don't like it now. I like the metallic armor pieces. I guess it looks expensive, you could say. I don't like the red bodysuit underneath. For me, this is going to have to be a miss. Sorry, Miss Teresa. It's just not my favourite look on you, girl. It's not the most flattering. I don't really love the hair. I do like the hat. The hat's cute. Next, we have Miss Scarlet MV. And considering the original look was from a design challenge that I actually think she should have been in the top four... I don't really know why she picks this. I guess because on All Stars 6, she redeemed her entrance look, which I think is probably the only miss that I can remember of Scarlet's. But disregarding that, the look is fucking phenomenal. The stonework and the sequin work is fierce. The mask is incredible. I love the makeup on the eye underneath. Every little detail is absolutely perfect. This is a hit. Yes, Miss Scarlet. So, so fierce. Next up, we have the Filipino winner, Marina Summers. Now, the original turno dress is giving like traditional drag costume, but the redemption is over. Marina! This is legendary she was born to do drag baby we saw that critique from rupaul and she only gives that to a very select amount of queens so miss marina you know she is making it to that fucking final yes sir this outfit is phenomenal honestly i don't have enough words to say about it the structure the tall the expensiveness of it all the embellishments the silhouette everything I have no notes. I can't even comment on this artistry. It is just breathtakingly fierce. It is a massive hit. Yes, Marina. We love to see it. Always fucking delivering on the runway. Always. And the headpiece is so cute too. Next, we have Tia Coffee. Now, we all know that first look is Booby the Fool. That was not cute. It was giving DNA Toys costume. It really wasn't it. This, however, is a massive, massive glow up. I'm not sure I like the print on the bodysuit. I just don't think it's my taste. I wish, I wish, wish, wish she would put on some pads. Just give us a bit of va va voom. It gives us a bit of body body oddy. I beg to you because it would really go a long way. I really do like the almost like 3D printed, like KG type. Thing across her chest and i love the mechanical wings although we've seen it done better before but it is camp it is cute overall i will give it a hit i love the hair there's just it's not really my taste but i can appreciate it next we have la grand dame who never misses it's so french glamorous ridiculous and dirty that's what I see French drag as. And I love it so much. The original, I don't really like it at all. I don't like the makeup. I don't like the dress. I get the concept though. But this is just the concept on steroids. How many condoms did she say she had? I don't know. But she really wanted to show safety this week. I mean, this is incredible. So innovative. So amazing. Yes! I have no notes. It's just so weird. I just don't have many words, but it's everything. I love it. This is a hit. Yes, Le Grand Dame. I love the intricate details, the different way she's stretched and placed the condoms and the bows. It's just so cute. I love it. Up next, we have the one who lost to the queen with no pants, Hannah Conda. Now, she chose to redeem her belts and buckles runway. I actually really liked the original look. Yes, it was understated and simple, but it was quaint. Now, for this redemption look, I love the message. And I love an educational moment with the dykes on bikes in the 80s. 
I loved hearing about that story. It really touched my heart. It was really cute. As for the look, don't love that wig. That wig is not it. It looks quite cheap. The makeup is a de-evolution from the original look. I don't love the actual look at all with the PVC latex. I like the butterfly on the back. It just looks cheap. Yeah. This one is a love the message, but I'm not going to hit or miss this look because of the message. So I love it for that, but the actual look is, is something. Last up, we have Gothy Kendall. Now she only had two looks to choose from and I'm glad she didn't choose the tiger one because we've heard enough and seen enough of the tiger. Leave it alone. So I'm glad she did that and chose the queen look. The original look, I really do not like this corset over the skirt the wig the makeup all of it chop so the redemption look is really cute it's a simple understated gown but again that's what it calls for it's a queen look i like that she remembered the clutch on the runway because she forgot that the last time and she was criticized for it so i'm glad she listened to the critique on that she looks beautiful it is a hit However, it's just a bit simple. I wish she would have had a breastplate, just a little one, or just something there. I just, I want body, body, body on these queens. That's what I love to see, but each to their own. Now, moving on to the results. Top two this week is Tia Coffee and Marina Summers, and I'm sorry, I just don't agree. Tia Coffee should not have been in that top two. Her moment was meant to be the big vocal moment of the performance and she just did not deliver or rise to the occasion she didn't do a bad job by any means but top two i don't think it should have gone to scarlet envy scarlet bodied this episode the lyrics were cute her performance was cute the stage presence was cute the vocals was giving yes scarlet snaps for scarlet and she should have been in that top two scarlet has been doing such a good job this season and that's always her story Always the bridesmaid and never the bride. She is always doing an amazing job and she just barely misses out or is never given her flowers. So it is sad to see. And I also think Le Grand Dame is lucky to be classed as high this week. I mean, I guess I can see it for her runway, but her performance, I don't know. It was up in the air for me. I think it was the correct bottom two though, for sure. Choriza, she just lacked a lot of confidence and in the same way Goffy did, but Goffy just royally fucks it i mean let's be honest and call a spade a spade the top two lip sync to self-esteem's fucking wizardry and i'd never heard the song before but i kind of lived marina eight there was no one else on that stage tia didn't even lip sync i didn't see her marina ate it up it was a clean sweep for me she clearly deserved that win and she decides to eliminate goffy kendall and that's the fairest thing to do. And I am glad to see it, to be honest, because I just did not want to see another week of Goffy Kendall doing mediocre, in the words of our wise shovel hole. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. Let me know what you guys thought of this episode in the comments down below. Give us a like, please help a sister out. Follow me on my socials. Links will be in the description. And that's it. Bye.